Hello everybody, um, just uh, a model that I've got in progress at the moment which is the, um, it's an old tooling of the Hasegawa flanker with the release of the new uh, trumpeter one which is far superior, far more accurate. I had this in the stash, um, devalued by the fact that the it's not as accurate as the trumpeter one so I just wanted to use it up. So um, I've, I've built it fairly rapidly over the last few days and uh, decided to do it in one of the Syrian uh, test aircraft schemes. What this uh, video is about really is just to cover, um, a lot of people ask me uh, about washes and how I apply washes. Uh, it's fair to say I've tried nearly every kind of wash um, out there from the uh, sludge washes to oil paints to um, things like the, uh, um, the, the flooring models uh, washes um, and stuff like that. I found over the years that they, they all have their places but essentially I, I always go back uh, for whatever reason uh, just because I, I work better or I find them easier to work with I always go back to um, oil paint washes uh, various different oil paints so I'm um, just going to cover some uh, a little bit of the washing with you and how I approach it so this model has been decalled already uh, normally I wash before decals and then touch in afterwards but um, this has been a model that's just been built really quickly I wasn't even certain I was going to give it a wash until I um, actually got the uh, paint scheme on and the decals on and realised it still looks a little bit um, a little bit monochrome so I, I want a, a wash to, to highlight some of the detail so I use various uh, shades of, um, of washes but these days I'm starting to uh, modulate them a little bit. I used to use either Payne's, Payne's Grey which is quite a dark uh, uh, wash with a bluey tint uh, almost exclusively but I've, these days I've decided um, or I've, I've gone towards uh, actually modulating the washes and making them match um, in, in terms of dark darkness or lightness match the uh, actual finish better so as you can see this flanker is a fairly light scheme so what I've decided with this one is that I'm going to use a mixture of um, as you can see that's Windsor & Newton Payne's Grey oil paint so I'm going to squeeze a little bit into um, into a dish like so and uh, I've got this, uh, this is faded grey, Abtai Lung, the, um, uh, the MIG Productions colour. So again, um, it's just a case of squeezing a little bit out onto uh, like that. And then I'm going to use some, um, uh, some enamel thinner. Um, this is uh, a Tamiya bottle, but it's actually just standard um, B&Q, Tamiya uh, B&Q white spirit. So I add a few drops. And uh, then uh, I use a uh, a good sized um, a good sized brush um, just to mix uh, mix it up. I hope you, you can see that's given me a sort of um, a medium to darkish grey which I think will go over all three colours here um, just fine. Now what I'm going to show you here is that um, some people like to use um, a pin wash and um, just uh, touch a little bit to a panel line and let it flow. Um, that's fine. Uh, one, one thing uh, I developed over the years I prefer to just literally go like so. Just give the uh, surface of your model a a really good coat. Okay, it will dry off fairly quickly. Okay, so let's go to the uh, tail. And what you find is you'll get um, you'll get build-ups in crevices and corners and stuff like that as well. Uh, it requires a bit of cleaning off afterwards to get the effect you want, but um, it's nothing too uh, too strenuous. So again, look on the other wing. All I'm doing is just adding, just giving it a good coat like so, making sure it gets into all the panel detail. Again, as you can see, with most of my modelling techniques, there's nothing particularly um, subtle about uh, the way I model. 
but it works for me. Yeah, let's just uh, bring us out a little bit so we can see more of the uh, more of the model. I'm going to do this in two separate. Uh, I'm going to do the underside first, and then I'm going to go back afterwards, and I'll do the uh, do the top side. But this is just to just to show you. So it's gone over everything, it's gone straight over the decals which have actually been sealed in with um, with Johnson's Clear anyway so they're, they're, they should be quite safe. So Just get it, get it right in there amongst all the um, amongst all the panel detail. Okay. Now what I'm um, what I'm noticing is that um, by the time I've got to the end, um, these bits are already these bits are really already starting to dry off. Um, it evaporates quite quickly. I just want to clean off to make sure I don't get any. On the white nose cone because I want that to remain fairly white if I can. Um, so all, you, all you're looking for really because oil paint stays wet for a goodly period of time once it's in place you can actually use a, a hairdryer or similar to assist it in um, drying off or evaporating the thinners. So what we've got now is I'm left with that, um, and the uh, the thinners has been evaporated. The thinners has evaporated away, and what I'm left with is the just the oil paint on the finish, which is um, oil paint takes a fair time to dry, so it's still fairly wet. So I'm just going to use a bit of kitchen towel now, tear a bit off, okay, and uh, if I can bring you in again. Okay, so you can see that wing, and it's there. You go. You can see I'm taking most of that off the surface. What you're left with is some of it will remain on and form streaks, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It's um, a good weathering effect. But the good thing with this kind of wash is um, one thing I would recommend is that you make sure it's onto a. a a glossy surface. Now this surface is very very glossy because um, I've used uh, Japanese lacquers and I've um, kind of uh, wet sanded it with micro mesh to make it very gloss but that's how simple it is to apply a wash um, using oil paint. Okay so let's just take the, take the uh, wash off of the tail here And there you go. Okay, I hope you can. Uh, I hope you can see that. Now the wash I've applied here is perhaps a little bit too much, and I might even um, temper it back a bit uh, for the uh, for the upper side. As you can see, that took me what five or ten minutes to wash, dry, and remove the excess. And it's just a case of moving over the entire model, um, doing that. I'm fortunate in that my, my surface finish is so glossy here that it's really easily taking off the excess that I don't want to remain on the model. Um, 
but one thing you really do need to do is make sure you get into all of these um, all of the little uh, corners and nooks and crannies because wash can build up there and uh, it, it can look quite ugly um, if it's not dealt with properly um, As ever with my modelling, I don't present this as the only way to do stuff. Uh, different people have different methods um, that work just fine for them. Um, all I'm doing here is sharing with you the method which, um, which I use. But I think you can see that particularly in, in areas like, um, uh, like the engine bay panels and stuff here, it, it gives a really, really effective, uh, a really effective finish. So I hope that um, that gives you some idea uh, as to how I apply a wash. I hope you can see how easy it is to do do a wash. And uh, if you haven't done it before, give it a go yourself. Um, and don't be afraid to try other techniques, try other um, different uh, formulas and mixtures. This is the one that works for me. So I hope that was um, of uh, of some help to some people.